Thank you so much, Ali. I am really excited to be here in person and with all of you virtually to talk about Delta Lake. In this talk, I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to explain what Delta Lake is and why it's the foundation of the lake house. I'm going to tell a story about Delta Lake's history, which is actually deeply entwined with this conference we're all at today. And then finally, I have a really exciting announcement about Delta's future. So first of all, what is Delta, and why is everyone talking about it? Well, as Ali said this morning, there's always been this big divide between data lakes and data warehouses. Data warehouses were the traditional technology. They were really easy to use, they were really fast, but they were expensive and not very scalable. Data lakes were the young upstart. They came in, they let you store tons of data, but they were kind of slow and clunky and difficult to configure. And Delta really was created to unify these two worlds. It brings ACID transactions to the data lake, and it brings speed and indexing, and it doesn't sacrifice its scalability or its elasticity, and it's what enables the lake house. When Delta first started, it was mostly a Spark technology, but that couldn't be further from the truth today. We have connectors for everything from old school technologies like Hive to fancy new technologies like DBT, which you'll hear, out, hear about in just a little bit, this year has been no, uh, no different. We've added a ton of different connectors. We've added support for Flink, Trino, and Presto. And we're working on support for Pulsar and Google's BigQuery as well. As the ecosystem has expanded, so has our user base. So a couple of, I think a year and a half ago, when we released Delta 1.0, we were only getting about half a million downloads per month. And today, it's at over 7 million downloads per month, which is pretty cool. And the other thing that's really been changing in the project is the, the health of the contributors. So this graph that I'm showing here is actually a metric by the Linux Foundation that looks at the health of contributions in any given open source project. It looks at how many unique people are fixing bugs and responding to pull requests and merging code. And so you can see really just how much momentum there is behind, uh, behind the project. And it's increased by over 600% in the last three years. But now I want to kind of rewind and take a trip down memory lane, talk about the history of Delta. So I'm going to go back to the year 2017, a much simpler time. I was working on structured streaming in Spark SQL, as Ali just said. And I was talking to a bunch of users at this conference about how they were processing tons of data from a variety of data sources. And they were doing it all in parallel on the cloud, and it was all great. And pretty much what every single one of them was doing was they were, when they were done processing data, they were writing it out as Parquet files to S3. Parquet is this pretty cool open columnar format. It's part of a database, but there were still a bunch of problems. It turns out that a big collection of files is not a database. I was fielding bug reports from users constantly who were saying Spark is broken, because they, what they were doing is they were basically corrupting their own tables, because there were no transactions. When their jobs failed because a machine was lost, it didn't clean up after itself, multiple people would write to a table and corrupt it. There was no schema enforcement, so if you drop data with any schema into the folder, it would make it impossible to read. There was a bunch of added complexity of working with the cloud. The Hadoop file system just wasn't really built for it. I'm sure people in this room remember setting the direct output committer, and if you got it wrong, things would be broken. And even just working with large tables was slow. Just listing all the files could take up to an hour. And so it was here at you know, what used to be known as the Spark Summit that I talked to a bunch of people and thought, there's got to be a better way. And I actually always take a couple of days off after Spark Summit to decompress. And I was so excited. I wrote a design doc <laughs> during that vacation. And so in 2018, we came back on the stage and we announced Databricks Delta. It was one of the first fully transactional storage systems that preserved all of the best parts of the cloud. And even better, it was battle tested by hundreds of our users at massive scale. In fact, one of my friends, Dom, uh, got up here and told us about his use case where he had been using Delta for the last year to process petabytes of data in real time with hundreds of analysts around the globe for a critical information security use case. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go to YouTube and check it out. But Delta was too good to keep just for Databricks. And so in 2019, we came back and we announced the open source Delta Lake. And we didn't just open source the protocol the description of how different people can connect and make transactions in the system. We actually also open sourced our battle-tested Spark reference implementation and put all of that code up on GitHub. But we weren't done with Delta. We were actually believed in this so much that Databricks started to commit its business to it. 
And so in addition to all the exciting things that were happening in Delta Lake, we were busy building features to make Delta even better. So we added this really cool command called optimize, which automatically takes all of your tiny files and compacts them into a larger one transactionally so you can get dramatically better performance. We built this really cool uh, command to go alongside of it called optimize the order, which actually takes your data and maps it to a multi-dimensional space filling curve so that you can filter efficiently on multiple dimensions. That works really well with this cool trick called data skipping based on statistics. It's basically like a, a coarse grained index for the cloud. We added the ability to write to these tables from multiple clusters and a whole bunch of other things that I don't have time to talk about. But there's a problem here. This, all of this advanced technology, you, know, you could read and write Delta from anywhere, but all these advanced features were only available inside of Databricks. And that's why today I am really excited to announce Delta Lake 2.0. All of Delta is now open source. And so if you see this feature matrix, you can see we're already on our way. If you've been following the project closely, you might have seen something is up. We've been opening up tickets on GitHub, and we are rapidly open sourcing all of these different features and bringing them out uh, you know, for the community. And what we've seen is this is actually going to dramatically improve the performance of this open source project. So as you can see, the baseline, this is Delta 1.0. With that optimize command, it improves performance a little bit. But when you add in Z order and data skipping, the performance gets really good, which is super exciting. This is uh, you know, the same TPCDS query that we've been showing all day today. And the other really exciting thing is Delta is now one of the most featureful open source transactional storage systems in the world. We are the only one where you can run it directly against cloud storage systems like ADLS without any extra infrastructure. We're the only ones that have data sharing. And there's a whole bunch of other differentiated features. We also did a little bit of performance comparison across all of these different open source projects. And Delta is somewhere between two and four times faster than the next competitors. And we're not the only ones who have noticed this huge performance increase. So this is from uh, some people over at DataBeans who are users of the open source project. And as you can see, they saw that we are dramatically faster, not only at loading data, but at processing data than Iceberg. But we're not done yet. There's actually some really cool technology waiting in the wings. I want to tell you get just a quick preview of one of those things. So there's always been a problem with columnar formats like Parquet. The problem is due to the encoding, when you want to update even just a single value, you have to rewrite the entire file. This is called write amplification in databases because it takes a single tiny write and turns it into a big, massive copy of all of this unchanged data. And so we're very excited to add this new technology to the Delta protocol that allows you to delete a single row called deletion vectors. What this is going to let you do is it's going to let you mark that row as deleted so you can only write out the data that changed, which will dramatically speed up things like deletes, updates, and merges. And we've already gotten started on this effort. So as you can see, there's a couple of JIRAs, some of them already resolved, where we've been adding some of the groundwork to both Parquet and Apache Spark. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize all of the great members of the community. So if we could give a round of applause for all these people who have made Delta what it is today. If you'd like to learn more, there's a ton of exciting things going on at this conference. Come and join us for our AMAs or our deep dives into various topics. If you want to get involved actually coding for the project, you can come to our meetup and actually talk to some committers and figure out some good projects to get started. If you're joining us virtually, you can still join the community. Check us out on GitHub or on Slack or on Twitter. And with that, I'll thank you very much.